Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Policy and Interoperable Health IT, Lecture B. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. List and discuss the impact of key health interoperability related topics in healthcare legislation. 2. Identify and discuss how the Meaningful Use Program and the ONC Certification Programs have impacted interoperable health IT. And 3. Assess and leverage Meaningful Use, ONC Certification, and other health IT policy activities to facilitate interoperability. This lecture will focus on the initial regulations from 2011 to 2015 and how they have impacted interoperability. Meaningful use and ONC certification has been covered in other units and in other components, so you may be familiar with meaningful use already and if covered in another component. Note that the CMS EHR Incentive Program required the meaningful use of certified EHR technology in a staged approach, starting with the easiest requirements, Stage 1, through the most difficult, Stage 3. ONC published regulations specifying certification requirements and standards requirements for certified health information technology to be used with each of the stages of meaningful use. ONC 2011 certified systems were used with Stage 1. Although Stage 1 and ONC 2011 certification are now mostly in the past, it is still good to understand how they improved interoperability. You might recall that eligible hospitals and eligible providers were required to implement electronic health records. To be able to meet the MU Stage 1 requirement for the EHR Incentive Program, the EHRs that were implemented had to be certified based on the ONC 2011 certification regulation. The eligible hospitals and eligible providers were required to utilize the EHR to meet certain objectives. For a complete list of the objectives and for more information on meaningful use in general, please go to Component 1. But let's look at some of the Stage 1 objectives and see how they impact interoperability. This slide shows a subset of the Stage 1 objectives. One objective was that providers needed to electronically prescribe medications. A prescription was written directly into the EHR and then was automatically sent to a pharmacy by using an interoperability standard called NCPDP script. Providers no longer had to write paper prescriptions, and there was an electronic recording of the prescriptions in the EHR. It was convenient for the patients because they no longer had to take a piece of paper to the pharmacy, and as a result, more medications were filled promptly. E-prescribing showcased the true benefit of interoperability. Another objective was that providers had to provide patients with an electronic copy of their health information upon request. It could be on a USB drive, but the point is, if a patient requested it, the provider had to provide it in an electronic standard format. This could help if a patient moved and needed to see another primary care provider and would have liked to give them a copy of their medical record. Another objective that overlapped with the objective in which patients were provided an electronic copy of their data was the objective in which providers had to provide patients with a clinical summary of their visit in any format. Even paper was acceptable. Both of these objectives began to change healthcare workflow and culture in preparation for interoperability between providers and patients. By providing even paper clinical summaries to patients, providers were getting used to giving patients their data, and patients were starting to learn that they had a right to their information and patients were able to take their summaries along with them when they went to other doctors. This helped start a culture change, although there is still room for improvement, towards transparency and patient engagement. Providers also had to maintain an active medication list. So whatever medications the patient was on, they had to record them. This is critical for interoperability, since before you can share information, you need to have it collected, in an accessible format. Additionally, the providers had an option to perform medication reconciliation 
which means to compare medications that the patient was taking before they saw the provider and what they would be receiving from the provider. The medication reconciliation could be done manually, but it would have to have been recorded electronically. Medication reconciliation helped prepare for an interoperable health IT because it got providers used to using the EHR as a care coordination tool, comparing information received externally from information that the provider authored. Another example of an objective and its effort on improving interoperability is more explicit. Providers had to test their EHR's capability to exchange key clinical information among care providers and patient authorized entities. Another clear example of underlying interoperability in Stage 1 was to test their capability to submit electronic data to immunization registries. Although these were just testing functionalities, it helped to start lay the foundation for interoperability. Another example is to send patient reminders either via email, paper, or phone. The reminder had to be of clinical relevance to the patient. If this was done electronically, this would enhance interoperability because it is an exchange of data, like appointments and scheduling, between systems. This was a simple yet effective example of the importance of workflows and that they were starting to come into place. Finally, the EHR had to collect information that could be used for quality measures. This was an improvement because beforehand, this was normally done manually via chart abstractions. There are many Stage 1 meaningful use objectives, but here we have highlighted several that had interoperability implications. With certification of EHRs, there were standards that were included in the ONC 2011 regulation. Here we just list the standards, but if you would like more information on standards, see Unit 5 and Component 9. There were standards for terminology privacy, and security, and data exchange. On this slide, we list the regulation standards for terminology and privacy security. On this slide, we list the ONC 2011 regulation standards for data exchange. By requiring that EHRs use standards, data began to be structured and standardized so that sharing would be easier. With Meaningful Use Stage 1 and the requirements for ONC 2011 certified EHRs, providers and hospitals began to adopt standards for interoperability. The objectives we discussed may have seemed simple on the surface, but they laid the foundation and exhibited the importance of interoperability. Where providers and hospitals did not have EHRs before, they now could have implemented certified EHR systems. Interoperability requires data to be regularly collected and structured, and EHRs provided the means. As the result of sharing data, some public health interfaces were built. Importantly, patients were provided a way to electronically access their data, and there was some widespread adoption of some standards useful for interoperability, most notably, NCPDP script for e-prescribing. Now let's move on to stage two and its impact on interoperability with patients. The ONC regulation that supported the certified health IT for stage two was referred to as ONC 2014 certified technology. Eligible hospitals and eligible providers now had to implement ONC 2014 certified technology and attest to a more advanced set of objectives. Let's look at the ones related to patient-centered care. First of all, many of the Stage 1 menu objectives that related to patient engagement now became required, such as giving patients education materials and sending patients reminders. Stage 2 also added several other related objectives. First was the ability to view, download, and transmit data to a third party. This means that eligible providers and eligible hospitals needed to give patients access to their data electronically. The data would go to a patient portal. The patient had to be able to access it and be able to view, download, and or transmit the data to a third party, if they wanted to do so. 
Second was the sending of secure messages between providers and to patients. This objective only applied to the ambulatory care setting. Third, instead of giving a paper clinical summary, it was now electronic. From a care coordination interoperability perspective, there were some other key Stage 2 objectives. ONC 2014 certified EHRs provided the ability to reconcile problems and allergies in addition to medications. Eligible hospitals and eligible providers were required to do medication reconciliation. Note that this was only a menu option in Stage 1. However, they did not yet have to reconcile allergies and problems even though their EHR supported the functionality. We discussed clinical summaries and how they are important for transitions of care. Providers in hospitals now had to create, transmit, and send clinical summaries to the next provider of care for 10% of their transitions. Although that does not sound like a lot, it was for those who were not doing that before and for EHR vendors who had to support the ability to receive and display care summaries for a care transition and referral. Another objective was to transmit electronic lab results from a hospital lab to an ambulatory provider. Therefore, lab results were getting structured and electronic. The e-prescribing requirements threshold increased from Stage 1 and became an optional objective for inpatient EHRs. So here we see care coordination being better supported through meaningful Stage 2 objectives and ONC 2014 criteria related to interoperability. There were also some criteria to support the learning health system through public and population health. This required public health authorities to support interoperability, as well as eligible providers and eligible hospitals to enter into active engagement with their public health authorities, working at building the required interoperability functionality. Thanks to meaningful use, information that is useful to public and population health was now being shared with public health authorities and with registries. To learn more about public health interoperability standards, please see Component 13. Stage 1 had begun the work of capturing quality information electronically and producing electronic quality measures and beginning to report these electronically in some cases. Stage 2 built on the progress of Stage 1, now supporting more clinical quality measures and a richer, higher, encoded, structured standard format to electronically produce and potentially e-submit the measurement data to the government on both the summary and patient level. Additionally, clinical decision support informed by knowledge sources was included. Where if a provider wanted to know more about a patient's diagnosis, problem, and best practices, they could click an info button. The info button would display the results of a query of a knowledge resource and return information for the provider, as well as for patient education. For example, a query based on a patient's diagnosis could be made to the National Library of Medicine's knowledge source called Medline Plus that would return information about the diagnosis, what symptoms to expect, what good self-care would entail, and what treatments were common. Now moving on to standards. The ONC 2014 required health IT standards, which is key for scaling interoperability because information should be exchanged in a structured standard format. Because of the requirement from ONC 2014 criteria, standards were being adopted in a more widespread way. Let's talk about some of the standards required, and some of them are here on the slide as examples, most of which are terminology standards. Most of these ONC 2014 standards are new for vendors and providers because they were not required in Stage 1. For more information on standards for healthcare interoperability, please see Unit 5. Stage 2 interoperability was hard because of the implementation work. On this slide is a list of challenges and efforts for providers and hospitals. These include mapping to standards, conducting numerous implementation tests, identifying partners, encouraging patients and providers, and multitasking during a short timeline 
with multiple stakeholders in different stages. There were many challenges, one of which was that many vendors were not able to certify for Stage 2, and so providers could not use them. So implementing certified technology for Stage 2 was difficult to achieve in the time frame proposed. Therefore, there were flexibility options in 2014 that allowed some providers to meet meaningful use with Stage 1 objectives and ONC 2011 certified technology. In 2015, vendors and providers continued to struggle, especially since the measurements were now going to be done on a year's worth of data, which proved harder to achieve. Providers especially struggled with the interoperability-related objectives. Then, in October 2015, CMS published a regulation that both defined Stage 3, but also defined a modified version of Stage 2 that took some immediate pressure off the hospitals and doctors by reducing and focusing objective requirements for the immediate time frame and then signaling threshold increases over time. However, despite the challenges, there were some accomplishments for interoperability. Vendors were being tested and certified to have interoperability functionality based on standards. ONC 2014 certification requirements made vendors adopt many more health IT standards that were also more robust than what was available in the past. Even functions that were not directly related to data exchange proved to be foundational. For example, ensuring that important data types were collected and stored on the EHR in a structured format. This was a key prerequisite for data exchange. Workflow and culture began to change to support care coordination and patient-centered care and population health. To prepare for the future, ONC criteria regulations included additional interoperability functionalities that were not yet required by meaningful use to help phase the advancements towards interoperability. This concludes Lecture B of Policy and Interoperable Health IT. In this lecture, we focused on the original policies from 2011 to 2015 that are related to interoperability. To summarize, Stage 1 of Meaningful Use helped lay the foundation by encouraging the implementation of EHRs which could regularly collect structured data for exchange. Stage 1 encouraged the adoption of standards, which is key to scale interoperability and ultimately for supporting patient-centered care, public and population health, care coordination, and the ONC vision for a learning health system. Stage 2 built on this foundation, adding many new standards requirements and key objectives to support interoperability with patients and to support care coordination and to start lay a foundation of interoperability to support a learning health system. Although there were challenges with Stage 2, it played a key role in improving healthcare interoperability in the United States.